Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Renz here, and you're watching the Raiders Report. And I know it doesn't look like the typical setup that we usually go with. Why, you may ask? Because I'm getting a Raiders tattoo live on the show. If you're not watching this live, pop on over, because today's going to be an absolute marathon. Coming up here on today's breakdown of the Raiders Report depth chart, I'm just going to give you my two cents of everything and all the players that ended up making it. Some of the players that didn't make it, we'll talk about the practice squad as well. Whiff, whiff. If we're going to be doing this, we got to start with the quarterback position. I'm going to be looking at Jimmy Garoppolo, Brian Hoyer, Aiden O'Connell. The number one thing that I am seeing Raider fans say about this part of the depth chart is, but Mitch, why is Brian Hoyer the number two QB? The answer is, that is the plan here for McDaniels. That is the plan with Josh McDaniels and both Dave Ziegler. The reason, Brian Hoyer signed a two-year deal. They want him to be the QB that trains Aiden O'Connell to get ready for next season. Even if the Raiders are bad, you're not going to see O'Connell this year. If the Raiders are good and Jimmy Garoppolo ends up getting hurt, that's where I could see Aiden O'Connell ending up getting his playing time for this upcoming season. But the Raiders are keeping three quarterbacks. As it stands right now, they do not have a QB on the practice squad. I thought maybe Chase Garbers has an opportunity to get it, but it doesn't seem like that is going to be the case. So give me a number right now, because this is the multi-million dollar question when you talk about the Raiders quarterback room. How many games is Garoppolo going to be playing this season? How many games is Jimmy G going to be starting? This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show, so you're about to get hit with a YouTube bad break. I want you to scroll on down and give me your answers right now. My answer here is going to be 12 and a half games. And the reason why I say that is because I see the over-under for Jimmy G playing this season is somewhere around that 12 and a half marker. I hope that he plays all 17. I know the Raiders believe that he's going to be able to play in all 17 games. But I also do this show, and I'm an honest man. He has dealt with a lot of injuries. I will say in terms of being optimistic, with Kyle Shanahan's style of offenses in years past, his offenses have gotten QBs hurt, where McDaniels has typically done a better job of making sure that quarterbacks stay healthy. Now let's go to the running back room here because Josh Jacobs, it's so good to have him back on this roster. Obviously, he was out for a significant amount of time, which we all deep down, I think, truly believed that he was going to be back on this team sooner rather than later. But when you have a team captain, when you have a guy that means so much to this organization, it's important to have him here. Now, you also got Samir White, Amir Abdullah, Brandon Bolden. This is going to be, I think, early on a lot more of a committee than what you saw last season. Let's not get it twisted. Josh Jacobs is still going to be the main running back this year. Last season, he had 393 total touches, which bell cow type of work. This season, I'd probably put my projection somewhere at around 310 total touches if he's able to stay healthy. I know they want to get Zamir White more work. The problem is Zamir White, uh, shout out to Zeus and all, he's not even close to what Josh Jacobs is as a running back. And you can have optimism. I do think that the Raiders... Offensive line is a lot better than what it gets credit for. Amir Abdul is going to get his third down in long situations. I'm sure Brandon Bolden is going to come in from time to time. And some of y'all probably wanted the Raiders to cut Brandon Bolden because you would have saved $2.23 million. The other part of that, though, is this team, just like I said about Hoyer, they want player coaches because they believe that that's how you really build a strong bond in that locker room. We're going to keep on breaking down other spots here of the Raiders depth chart. But if you're looking for free videos and if you bleed silver and black, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because I like to believe that this is the channel for you. If I, have, uh, if I haven't proven how much of a Raider fan I am to some of y'all, then y'all are just hating. But on top of that, we have the best damn fans in all of sports. I miss being able to tailgate in Oakland. And every time that you turn on this show, I want it to feel like an Oakland tailgate. Let's go to the wide receiver room now, which is I think of the position that most people would say is the deepest position of this roster. You got the best wide receiver in the National Football League in Devontae Adams. You have a severely underrated wide receiver in Jacoby Myers. Good slot guy in Hunter Renfro. DeAndre Carter ended up making the team. Trey Tucker, both 
very quick gadgety. The name that's surprising, and the name that, honestly, man, I probably owe an apology to, is Christian Wilkerson, because I can remember when the Raiders signed Wilkerson, and everybody was like, oh, it's just another Patriots receiver. I said it's more of just a depth body. Did not ever think that he was going to make this team. But guess what? And I'm happy that the Raiders did this because he played well in the preseason. He had 17 grabs, 188 yards in that final game, which I think it was almost like the tryout. He saw the most targets in the game. He saw 13. He was the only Raiders player in that final preseason game to see over four targets. So when you see something like that, you're like, all right, they're obviously trying to get him some work. Had 10 catches, showed that he had a good connection with Aiden O'Connell. Christian Wilkerson ends up making this team. Let's now go to the tight end room here. Austin Hooper, Michael Mayer, and Jesper Horstead. I know at the beginning of the offseason, after the Raiders drafted Mayer, there were quite a bit of Raider fans that got mad at me for saying that Hooper, to me, is still going to be the top tight end. And the reason is because it's not easy getting acclimated into the NFL your very first year into league because there's a lot of other things that you got to learn. And one of the things that we are seeing right now that Michael Mayer needs to learn is how to run block because you can run block in college. You can run block playing at Notre Dame. But then going up against legit NFL talent, it's totally different. It's why I always laugh when people used to say, oh, Alabama could beat the worst NFL team. Or I've heard people say Georgia could beat the worst NFL team. No, they couldn't because not all those players are NFL players. And Michael Mayer right now is going up against NFL players, some of which didn't even make the roster, and dude's getting whooped in terms of run blocking. He is a better tight end overall than Hooper, maybe not right now, and he will be at some point in his career. But what's going to keep him off the field to start this season is his inability to block. He needs to get better, especially in Josh McDaniels' system. Let's go to the guys that do all the blocking, or most of the blocking. It's the big guys up front. And this is one of the deepest Raiders offensive line groups that I have seen in quite some time. I know a lot of credit used to go back to those early teams with, I'm talking like 2015, 2016, don't get me wrong, Derek Carr played at a very high level. But I think a lot of real Raider fans would say that offensive line was also insanely good, led by Rodney Hudson at center. This offensive line also has extreme depth. Colton Miller's legit. Dylan Parham's legit. Andre James is an average center. Greg Van Roten is an average right guard. Jermaine Illuminor, above average right tackle. I don't love the fact that they kept Justin Heron. And I can't really give you a reason why they did besides they traded for him. He was a former Patriot. He has those coaching ties and that they believe that maybe he's a little bit banged up right now and maybe that he's going to be better down the road. If it was up to me, would have never kept him. I do think that one of the reasons why maybe he did make this team is because Dalton Wagner is done for the season. They had to put him on IR and with also the injury to Brandon Parker, they just need more offensive tackle depth. That's plain and simple. Jordan Meredith was a surprising move. I was happy that the Raiders were able to keep a McClendon Curtis on their practice squad. Overall, though, you kept Natane Moody on your practice squad. This Raiders team is talented up front, and I know that if they want to be able to achieve the ultimate goal, which obviously is a Super Bowl, but you know we'll, we'll, we'll be real here. If they can get into the playoffs, it's because of those big guys up front blocking for Josh Jacobs, but most importantly, keeping Jimmy Garoppolo healthy. Now, if you guys want to bet on the Raiders this season, there is one place to do it and one place only, and that is with our sports book partner, BetUS. We have the best deal on the internet, and I'm not just saying that because I'm on this show. I'm, I'm sim telling you, if you can find a better deal out there, show me, because I don't think it is. If you go to chatsports.com slash Raiders, and then you use promo code Raiders125, you're actually going to be able to get 125% deposit bonus if you're wondering what does that mean it means for first time depositors if you were to put down a hundred dollars bet us is going to give you 125 dollars for free to bet with imagine right now you order a pizza you get a free pizza and then two slices on top of that for free that's how good of a deal this is the raiders as it stands that i am making this video are four point underdogs to the denver broncos the broncos are so desperate at wide receiver they just signed philip dorsett wasn't good enough to make the raiders He's going to play in that game, I would imagine, up against Las Vegas. So if you don't think the Raiders are going to lose to Denver, chatsports.com slash Raiders, promo code Raiders125 for 125%.
deposit bonus. Let's all go to the defensive side of the football. The Raiders decided to keep five defensive ends, and we knew that it was going to be Crosby, Tyree, Wilson, Chandler Jones. I mean, that was locked and loaded stone. Hell, I might as well have gotten a tattoo of that put on my leg because we all knew that was happening. The spot that we didn't know was going to be that fourth defensive end spot. Was it going to be Malcolm Kuntz? Was it going to be Isaac Rochelle? Was it going to be Jordan Willis? Some people thought maybe Adam Plant Jr. And I'm happy that Kuntz ends up winning this job. And to me, the reason why he won the job is because of his ability to be able to get after the quarterback. Out of the names that I just mentioned there, he had the most ability of being able to get after the QB. And sure, they might be a little bit worried about some injuries with Tyree and Chandler Jones. Koontz also has the ability to be a stand-up, like, outside linebacker if he were to be in a 3-4 system, which is one of the things that I can see Patrick Graham potentially utilizing with Koontz out there. He also played with a chip on his shoulder. He gained some good weight this offseason. Very, very motivated player. Happy that he made this team. The most surprising move, though, from the defensive ends was the fact that Adam Plant Jr. didn't make the practice squad. I saw that, and I literally couldn't freaking believe myself. Let's now go to the big guys up the middle on defense. It's the defensive tackle room. Bilal Nichols is the leading dude here for this one. Jerry Tillery's got to also be up there as one of the top guys. And then this is where it got interesting. They kept better in John Jenkins. They also kept an uh, OG Patriot player, kind of Adam Butler. He's 27, 28 years old. They are rolling with the seventh rounder, Nesta Jade Silvera. And then they're rolling with the third rounder out of Alabama, Byron Young. Some of y'all that maybe don't follow this show as closely don't know this, but yes, the Raiders, they traded away Neil Farrell Jr. to the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a few days ago. It was, what, Tuesday when the Raiders had to get their roster down to 53. So that was an interesting move. And maybe it's because of Chris Jones. And I'll say, though, if you've watched this show for a long time, you'll know that Jeremy and I said before the NFL draft that there were reports out there that Matthew Butler and Neil Farrell Jr. were falling out of favor with this coaching staff. And, I mean, we got told by a very popular Raiders player that they didn't have the work ethic, that they weren't putting in the time. It was one of the reasons why that they got punished last offseason and why they were healthy scratches so often. So am I surprised that Matthew Butler didn't make the roster after hearing that? No, not really. Am I surprised that Neil Farrell Jr. got traded away after hearing that? No, not really. But this defensive tackle room is one of the weaker units, and it definitely needs to show up and show out this year, or else it's going to be another long season for the defense. Let's go to the linebacker unit. The other unit here that I would say most Raider fans are probably the most worried about, Divine Diablo, Roberts, Berlain were locks. I also was 75 80% sure that Luke Masterson was going to make this team after his play last season with the team. For them, though, to keep two linebackers was interesting. Curtis Bolton was very happy for him. Last week, he talked about how him and his dad both grew up as Raider fans and call me a sucker for that if you want. I'm always going to be a sucker for a player that's like, you know what, man, I get to live my dream. It gets hyped up a lot for Devontae Adams. Like One of the reasons why fans were so excited that Devontae was coming to Las Vegas is because he was a Raider. Marcus Peters, same thing, was a Raider at heart. Family, Raiders at heart. And Curtis Bolton is a... Very hardworking player, a good athlete, going to be more of a special teams player. But then also for Amari Bernie, the rookie, he's going to be able to get his playing time. He was a lock to make it since the Raiders drafted him in the sixth round. My question to you is this. We just talked about defensive tackle. We just talked about linebacker. Which position group is the weakest for the Las Vegas Raiders? If you think it's DT, I want you to type DT below. If you think it's linebacker, I want you to type linebacker below. If you're like, Mitch, it's not DT, it's not linebacker, it's a totally another position, you could type that down below. Let's go now to the corner back room here. Jacorian Bennett, Nate Hobbs, Marcus Peters are going to be the top three corners on this team, and they're going to get the most playing time. Bennett also, shout out to him. I love what the rookie did. He changed his number to zero, and if you're going to be a rookie, and you change your number to zero. That's that type of baldy shit that I love. Pause. Also, David Long Jr. made it over Duke Shelley, which that was probably the most surprising move from this cornerback room. Happy that Amik Robertson made it for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier, just like Malcolm Kuntz. Then with Brandon Faison, I did think for a second that maybe Faison would be put on short-term IR. However, it was reported yesterday 
that no Raiders players are expected to be put on IR. So with that being said, Faison's going to be getting some reps. They gave him $1.9 million of guaranteed money. And as soon as I saw the fact that the Raiders gave him that guarantee, I was like, okay, this is going to be a player to keep in mind. The Raiders also, though, kept Sam Webb on the practice squad. Tyler Hall's on the practice squad. And I know if one of these players that made the 53 were to go down, Patrick Graham, Josh McDaniels, and Dave Ziegler, they would have confidence that Tyler Hall, Sam Webb would be able to step in right away and at least give you some solid depth in a pinch. Let's now go to the safety room. They kept five safeties, and the one player that I, I know I would talk about live a lot, and I'm kicking myself in the ass for not keeping him on my 53-man roster is Roderick Teamer. And the reason why I say that is because I know how much the Raiders value special teams. They value special teams a lot. So you keep Trevon Merrick, you keep Marcus Epps, and then on top of that, you're going to see a little bit of the rookie get his action going here with Chris Smith. And then Roderick Teamer playing more from a special teams role. And then Isaiah Palomeo, who has put on some weight, going to play a little bit of box safety, going to play a little bit of linebacker probably here and there. So that's what you're seeing. Then to round it out, special teams. You got the second best kicker in the National Football League behind only Justin Tucker and Daniel Carlson. A.J. Cole, all pro punter. Jacob Bob and Moyer at long snapper, and then handling a lot of the punt returning and kick return duties. It's going to be DeAndre Carter. I don't think that they're going to put Renfro out there in situations. Maybe more if a you need a fair catch, and like that's more important instead of trying to get the yards afterward. That's something. And then from a kick return standpoint, it's going to be DeAndre Carter and Amir Abdullah. That was the Raiders' depth chart breakdown. If you made it this far in the show, join us live here. Chat Sports Studios, tattoos going down. Shout out to our tattoo artist, also Sayer. You can give him a follow on Instagram at Sayer underscore tattoo. We'll put that link for you guys down below. We'll also put it down in the comments and in the description of the show. I'm really excited, and the reason why we're doing this is because obviously Raider Ron's showing out, but... uh. Anytime people that watch this show, like that's what I try to do here. We try to bring the Raiders fam together. Sayer hit me up on Instagram, said, hey, man, heard you're looking for a Raiders tattoo. Raiders report watcher, diehard Raider fan. I want to be the one that does it. Said, look no further. Let's get it going. Let's get it happening. Raider Ron made it happen. Raider Nation made it happen. And now we're going to be making it happen here live on the Raiders report.